Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Sunday night market strategy session for Sunday, June 28th, 2015. Next week, this coming week, is actually a short week because of the Independence Day holiday in the United States on Saturday that is being celebrated on Friday for the markets. But that doesn't mean that it's going to be a boring week. It looks like it's going to be anything but, unless uh, you have not been paying attention today, which is fine because it is Sunday. Um, it was news out of Greece. It looks like Greece is going to default. Stock market and banks are closed for at least tomorrow. I heard the stock market's all week, but now I, I hear it's just for tomorrow. And the euro got hit. The U.S. dollar got hit as well. Uh, it's still doing better than the euro, but uh, the euro, the dollar versus the yen got clocked a little bit. And that unwinded or unwound some of the carry trade, which is why we are pushing lower here in the S&P futures down 33 and a quarter points. Paul, why are bonds up, please? Please explain why bonds are up on this news. Dude, I heard it because you bought 500 million large. Yeah, I wish. So bonds are simply up in a, because of a flight to quality. <clears throat> if if Greece if Greece defaults and that whole chain of events begins to happen, then where's the safe haven? People are going to run to the U.S. That's it. Safe haven trade. Which European markets will be closed? FTSE, CAC, no, I, the Greek, no, I think just stock, Greece. The Greek stock market is closed. Yeah. Okay, so let's go through our normal routine at least to start. Whoops. Okay, well, let's just leave this up because I'm going to talk about this in a second, but we'll go to Forex Factory for now, and we'll see. Okay, so this is what's going on this week as far as economic reports. Monday, it's an Italian bank holiday. You got preliminary CPI in Germany and Spain and pending home sales in the U.S., then you got the Euro Group meetings on Tuesday. What will that be about, I wonder? I wonder, are they going to be bringing up Greece in, uh, during those two? That's the question. Will they be bringing them up during the Euro Group meetings as well, Paul? Uh, <clears throat> I, don't I don't know what the Euro Group meetings are, to be honest. Um, but I don't think this, is, this has anything to do with with Greece. Yeah, so the agenda's already been set. That's what Greece, I mean. Eurogroup meetings again. Pull, show me on the thing. Oh, there it is. Eurogroup, red. I, yeah, I don't know what that means. I mean, for the Euro, for the Euro, for Greece, it boils down to the ECB, which they're probably having emergency meetings once a day or more. It boils down to the IMF, ditto, and the European Union, Probably something similar. I don't. I don't know what Eurogroup meetings mean, though. Okay, it's just are oh, usually held in Brussels and attended by the Eurogroup president, finance ministers from Euro area member states. It's rated a red, so I, I, you know. Yeah. So I guess they would have a discussion about Greece, but they're not going to be the ones pulling the trigger, okay. or or involved in any decision making. Okay. Then you got. Consumer confidence on Tuesdays rated a red. Chicago PMI in orange, but it is right after the open, right at 9:45. On Wednesday, you have the ADP non-farm employment change. You have ISM manufacturing, so Wednesday's a busy day in the morning too. And then Thursday, you have the job numbers, and Draghi is speaking. Friday, the U.S. market is closed because they're celebrating Independence Day. Uh, so Thursday, I, I haven't seen that too much where they've moved the, the job numbers to Thursday. Yeah, they, they, they move into Friday. And they do it. That's funny because um, 
Good Friday, if you all recall, they, they, they released the job numbers on Friday when the market was closed. They right. have this alternating sequence. And I know a couple of years ago, actually it's more than a couple of years ago, it's got to be th four or five, six years ago, they released the job numbers on the holiday shortened Friday when, the, when, when July 4th was on a Saturday. So I don't think they know what the heck they're doing, frankly, in, in the government, which is no shock to anyone who's here anyway. Yeah. They just did it on Friday anyway. Yeah, so this time they're doing it on Thursday. I thought that seemed kind of strange. So I don't know. Anyway, if they screw up the report, will someone get fired? I, I don't think anybody gets fired. We can only hope so. Yeah, that's the that's the truth. All right. So, for those of you, just going to make one quick commercial, and then I'm going to hand it over to Paul. Because Paul's got a lot to say today. So, for those of you who are on the fence or who have not joined up with the inner circle yet, this is the last opportunity at this pricing. We are raising prices after tonight. It expires 3 hours, 52 minutes, and 20 seconds. You can get the monthly plan for $87 a month. You can get the annual plan for $997. It's actually 14 months plus an hour of coaching with me. These are the prices you're locked in forever. So if the prices rise, you'll always be able to pay that amount. You will never have to pay more. And if we lower it, which is not going to happen, you'll be able to pay less. But it's not going to happen. These are going to be the lowest prices possible. This month, we had a couple of push trades, a couple of trades that stopped out break even. One trade that lost, I mean, I'm breaking the guru code by admitting that we had a loser. And we had four winners. One of them, a very small winner on the SPY for about 34 cents. But then we had a couple of nice winners, one with Banks Baxter International, Bank of America, and then a decent winner with GameStop. Uh, these are short-term trades. We are completely flat going into tomorrow as per the newsletter. No positions. We were actually looking for new initiations tomorrow, but because the Greece decided to hold off for a day. But, uh, you know, we're not day trading. The management is done end of day. It relies on market timing, market structure, trends that have worked for years and years and years, and chart pattern setups. So if you are looking to join up to get a reliable service that you could count on, it's a weekly newsletter. We have a 7.20 p.m. Eastern weekly question and answer. That's before this session where you get to ask whatever you want, including your own stocks, whatever you want to look at. You get a nightly video from me. You get Tiny's trading lessons, which have three lessons up so far, but soon to be added a few more. I laid some out. This weekend, I just have to record them. You get the seven stocks ready for big moves, which none have been called yet uh, because the market is, continues to stay in this ridiculous range. You get the how to see a bear market before it begins, which Paul is going to give. So you get all that for $997. Or if you go on the monthly plan, it's 87 bucks a month. And if you're here, when we hold those events, you get them as well. So if you've considered joining, here's the URL. There's no pressure, none of this stuff. That's not how we do it, okay? It's a decision. It's entirely up to you, okay? The decision is in your hands. But if you want reliable, consistent results, then this is the service for you. So you can go to winningedgetrader.com slash special dash offer. I did a quick video on it a month ago. It's still valid. If you want to sign up, here it is. Okay, we even have a plan for pay of two hundred and sixty-seven dollars each. If you don't want to pay the whole nine ninety-seven up front, that's it. All right, I'm going to hand it over to Paul. But if you have any questions, you can always write to me at tiny at winningedgetrader.com, or you could call me. It's fine. I put my phone number on the video at the end. That's my cell phone, by the way. 
Uh, it's not a deadline that goes nowhere. It's actually my cell phone. A lot of you have called it, so you know. I usually pick up. If not, leave a message, and I'll call you back if you have any questions on it. But, you know, we're at the halfway point of the year. So if you've been struggling for the first six months because the market hasn't been going anywhere, you have to ask yourself, if you are the coach of a football team and you were down 14 nothing at halftime, would you go into the locker room and tell everybody, okay, let's just give up the game, or would you come back fighting twice as hard? So, look, $87 a month, uh, assuming 22 days in a month, comes to less than 4 bucks a day. You know, if you can't afford $4 a day, you may have to really rethink of how serious you are about making money in the market. That's all I have to say. Here's Paul, and I will talk to everybody soon. Oh, by the way, before I go, next week is July 5th. Sunday. I don't know if Paul's going to be here because he may be away or whatever. I am definitely doing the class next week on July 5th with or without Paul. So there will be a class next week. Um, and Paul, I don't know what Paul's schedule is. So if he's not going to make it, I'm definitely coming. All right. Because I am not going away. So um, that's it. Here's Paul. Dude, can we throw in some Ginsu steak knives with our offer? Yes, and you get the Ginzu steak knife with the lifetime guarantee. Okay, I like that idea. Okay. Because if we suck, at least you'll have the steak knives. That's right. Hopefully not to come after us with, but we have bodyguards. Don't. Oh, no, that's someone else. I'm sorry. We used, we used to have bodyguards, not anymore. Okay. That's it. Okay. Good Sunday evening, everybody. Whoops. I got my water. I'm all, I'm good to go. So, we have not spoken in several weeks, which has been my fault, not Tiny's. Um, I've been coaching my daughter's uh, 12U All-Star softball team, and we had a game last Sunday night that ended up getting canceled at the last minute, and the Sunday before, I had to go to a 10-minute meeting at 7 o'clock, and I got home at 11 o'clock, or 10 o'clock. So my apologies, um, but those of you who know me know that family is always first for me. And I apologize for the inconvenience that I caused you, but when it comes to my kids, they're always number one. So through today, over the last couple of weeks, not a ton has changed. My So if you read my blog at all, um, oh, and by the way, Tiny, I just read the newsletter you posted. Uh, that's a really good issue, I thought. I really liked how it, it, it was laid out, and I think you did a good job on it. Um, <clears throat> I had been talking about this trading range going on for a while longer, for the, for the foreseeable past, anyway. And I continue to, to believe that, that, this, that a trading range is, has been, and will be in place, and we're just going to continue to widen it out. I've said for weeks and weeks and weeks and months that don't see much higher than 18.5, 18.6 in the short term, and on the downside, maybe 17,000, 16.9 uh, as the best and worst. And what that essentially means is at the upper end of the trading range with Dow 18,000 or so, your upside is only you know, 500 points, and your downside is over 1,000. It's not great risk-reward from my seat. So, um, as I've been doing for a while, I've been trying to sell into rallies and buy into weakness. And I did a pretty good job over the last couple of months doing that. Most recently, selling the last new high in uh, in the uh, when Nasdaq made a new all-time high, I did some more selling. Now, given that we're down one and a half percent in pre-market, I wish I'd sold a whole lot more, but I didn't. I'm just glad I sold what I did because I've got some powder dry to take advantage of what I think may end up being the best buying opportunity of the year. We'll see how it all shakes out. I don't want to put the cart before the horse, but um, we've been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for pessimism to build up in the markets, and this may be the opportunity. So with that, <clears throat> let's launch. If you've been asleep most of the day, then 
you probably don't know that uh, you know the Greeks called a referendum for July 5th to vote on the latest or to vote on accepting continuing to accept the har the quote unquote harsh fiscal realities that have been placed upon them by their lenders. Um, the Greek banks are not opening tomorrow. And that's because the European Central Bank, the ECB, said it, it would not increase the uh, the emergency, essentially credit lines that have been extending to Greece. So they're going to close the banks. So there's no bank run. Well, there's going to there has been a bank run, and there's going to be a bank run. So that's not so good. FDR did that uh, in the 30s, and then he made owning gold illegal. Um, Greek the Greeks generally have. I guess they can make owning olive oil illegal, but there's not much that can really move their financial system. Um, I also heard, I didn't see, Tiny said that uh, the Greek stock market's going to be closed for, for some period of time. So after five years, the rubber is finally meeting the road in Greece. And actually, I kind of like that line for a newsletter. I'm going to write that down right now. So let's dive in. We know that the, the pre-market were down one one and a half percent. So a lot of the charts that I pull up will dramatically change first thing tomorrow morning. And while I have you here, if anybody ha can recommend a really good, I don't want an OtterBox. I had that last time. But I've had the new Samsung Galaxy 6 since the day it came out. I pre-purchased it, and I've been walking around without a cover on it. And now I decided, you know what, I've dropped it twice, and I got lucky because I kicked it. So if anybody could recommend a good cover for a Samsung Galaxy 6, a good case, uh, let me know. <clears throat> okay, so here's the, you know what, let me start with the ES instead of the S&P 500. So this is live. Here is the ES right now. Okay. So here is our trading range. Here is the ES. We're once again heading to the middle of the trading range, lower part of the trading range. Um, and that's what I'm focused on. What's going to happen tomorrow? Will we continue? Will we open down and then bounce? Will we open down and just collapse? We'll see tomorrow. So much is going to depend on news flow. Um, from my opinion, it's not time to be a giraffe and stick your neck out. I think it's time to let things shake out and settle down because eventually, if we build up enough pessimism, I think we can launch 20,000 sometime this next quarter, which in this quarter ends Tuesday. Let's see. So here's ES. Right down here, we're right near the 200-day moving average, if that matters. And we're right near this, these nested lows, which definitely matter. A little bit lower. On the NQs, a little stronger, right? Um, you know, this decline doesn't mean a row of beans yet. But I'm still watching to see where we are. We going to go down and test the 200? Are we going to pause higher? Are we going to go down? This would be a really big decline down here. But we'll see what happens. And now these charts do not have the two percent, the one and a half percent decline. So here's the uh, mid, the um, mid caps. So from here, you're probably looking. I'm just going to round. We'll call it uh, you know, down in here. Is where we are right now. Um, you know, kind of in the middle of nowhere. Small caps have been by far the strongest index. Oh, and very important, very important, triple star. Tuesday is the annual Russell rebalance. Tuesday is the annual Russell rebalance. Where they reconstitute... The Russell 2000 index. There's all kinds of trades going on with that. Okay, let's see. 
uh, here's VGK Europe, which I had played successfully and then unsuccessfully during this year. I have no position in it right now. It looks really sloppy. Um, so I'll be looking to get interested once we're below the 200-day moving average. So I'm looking at it probably sub-55 before I really care to trade it. Emerging markets, this chart looks downright awful. Um, and I'm going to get hurt tomorrow. I do own a lot of emerging markets. So that's going to hurt me tomorrow. But this balance was really feeble, and now we're probably going to be sub-39 tomorrow morning down in here. That's an oucher. Um, I own two, still own China, and that's going to be ugly tomorrow morning for me, probably down into the 45 area. That's going to really hurt. And Hong Kong, similarly, will be down into here, and that's going to hurt. So on the, my emerging market side, it's going to be hurt. I'll be in a little bit of pain tomorrow morning. Um, I have to figure it out as the day goes on. Unlikely that I will sell any time in the first half of the day because I think that's when all the pain is going to happen. I'd rather give it a chance to bounce during the day and then make a decision. Let's see. Uh, are the markets we did? Uh, we did. All right, let me pause and uh, see if you guys have any questions. Nobody has questions. Oh, you know what? My question. Well, there we go. <clears throat> uh, are the Germans still willing to negotiate or have they pulled the demands to the table? I don't know. I haven't heard Jack anything from the from, from the Germans at all. So I don't know. And the IMF has done nothing. They've not changed anything that I've seen. There's going to be a lot of banks left holding the bad debt. Jack, I don't think so. I don't think you've got a lot of banks holding Greek debt right now. I think it's all in higher higher party hands. Uh, let's see. There's a lot of pros selling when the major indices ride the top of the consolidation range. Um, Maybe, uh, I'm not sure I agree with that as a blank, I actually don't agree as a blanket statement, that's for sure. Um, during this, in this period, I do agree with it, which is why I was selling, but I wouldn't consider myself a part of the pro-selling. Uh, let's see. I think oil is mean to vinegar, that's funny. Scott, get out of here. I don't want an, 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 an iJunk 6. I like my Samsung Galaxy 6. My kids have the iPhones, not me. Let's see. Tuesday after market closes early for a leave job. That is uh, What do you think? Wait. Why do you think China will be down? Fred. Um, I think China will be down, Fred. It's funny, China cut rates, I think, Friday night, and my guess is that uh, it will be totally ignored. I think China is going to be down just on the global reverberations of Greece. That's why I think China will be down, Fred. Uh, what generally happened to small caps on rebalancing? Well, the, in rebalancing, they kick out the stocks that no longer make up the Russell 2000 and they add the new stocks in so you get funds having to buy certain stocks and sell certain stocks but small cap small caps typically rally I'm sorry small caps typically outperform into the rebounds and underperform out of it uh, Jason I do not have a TLT position I have zero I'm not long I'm not short and bonds are up big so my guess in TLT is um, you're probably looking at somewhere in the 118 to 120. So I think you'll go from the bottom of the range to the top of the range in one trade uh, tomorrow morning. What level is your great buy opportunity for S&P Dow? Robert, I don't have a level. Um, 
I don't believe in having a magical level like you know Dow seventeen thousand is, is the most. But I think you have to look at what other evidence is there along with it. So here's the Dow. Um, I for weeks and months I've been saying our worst case scenario is probably Dow sixteen nine right down here. Is there any magical? Not really. Other than it'll stop everybody out, but you know. The internal indicators may line up at Dow 17.6 or 17.4 or 17,000. I don't know. I, I don't believe in magical numbers. Mickey, I take it one day at a time and see what, what the other supporting evidence is. Uh, let's see. Index futures are long, and 30-year bonds are short. Uh, Mark, I, I don't. I wouldn't. First of all, I wouldn't. I'm not going to do anything tonight or early tomorrow morning, and that's because we're not in this prolonged, protracted decline. It's not like we've been going down for weeks and months. We've been in a trading range for six months, and now we're towards the lower end of the range. So. I'm not in a hurry to do anything. I'm in a hurry to watch um, and see how things shake out. I would not want to do anything prematurely tomorrow morning. If we were down 10, 12% and we were going to open down big tomorrow morning, then I'd probably be a buyer. But right now, I'm going to sit and watch. Uh, let's see. I don't, you know, we'll, we'll, Who's going to blank mark? That's a good question. I don't know. You've got you know, the Greeks with seemingly nothing to lose because whatever scenario they choose, it's a bad one. And then you've got the Troika who's decided to finally to play hardball. Who knows? Who, I mean, whomever blinks loses the war. This is not a battle. This is the war right now. So Greece blinks, they're done. And if the Troika blinks, they're done. So we'll see this week. Uh, let's see. Do you think that Miski adding China to the global stock market index will push Chinese stocks drastically higher in the next couple of years? Jason, Whew. no, I don't think that Miski adding China will do, will be that important right now. I think longer term it is. Um, over the next couple of years, too much depends on how some of these things are resolved. If the U.S. bull market peaks, China is going to peak as well. But let me say this: if I was bullish the world, I would certainly own China. I think that's a good play, but I wouldn't just think China's not going to go up by itself. All right, that's all. You just got a lot of questions. My throat hurts already. All right, let me, let me push forward. So we know we're going to see some blood in the water tomorrow. It's like Shark Week. Shark Week on Discovery. There's, oh shoot, what the heck did I do? There we go. All right, so let's go down and go through the, the, my three key sectors. Banks, which you all know, I, I said this before they rallied. This is my play for the second half of the year. Um, I did not like them. I don't like them up here. It looks like we're going to get a pullback uh, somewhere around the 35-ish area. I think you can look at the banks again, which may be coming up this week. So banks look fine intermediate term. Short term, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't grab them yet. But bull market wise, they look pretty good. The transports look like poop still. They cannot get out of their own way. So now it's been seven months of this. And this is, frankly, continuing to be concerning. Um, this is the kind of action you see at the end of a bull market. But nothing else so far has been backing it up. So this is on my things that keep me up at night right now, the trannies. And the semis, 
know, they they last saw a high up here. They look okay. I mean, they're going to be down probably towards 90 this week. Um, but I wouldn't yet say this was their was their bull market peak. Uh, and in fact, I probably put them on my on my buy list when I turn bullish to buy these the market sooner than later. IGV, I said it all year long and last year, quietly, this is the leadership of the market. And I think you can buy a pullback, you know, into 95 to 98, which you'll probably get this week. IYZ, it's been it's killing me. Here's like crap. I didn't like this pattern. I didn't like this rally. I don't like this decline. I think it probably goes 28, 28 and a half, and then we'll we'll revisit it. Don't like it. Diversified financials. I like the banks, the big banks better, but these look fine in the, any kind of weakness we see. XLY, our leader of the our leader of leaders, the consumer. Bull markets do not peak with the consumer stocks at all-time highs. Sorry. Bull markets do not peak like this. And I challenge you to go find one that did because you won't find any. Retail stocks, a little bit weaker, but not terrible. Still okay. Look for your pull. We're going to get a pullback. Home builders, I'm writing a, I, just, I got a, a bunch of fresh blogs coming out tomorrow. This is one of them from my, I did about on Yahoo Finance. I like the home builders. They were my, one of my sector picks of the year, and I still like them. And you're going to get a pretty good shot to the downside, and I'd be a buyer of home builders in a weakness. XLI, industrials, I've said all along. At best, they're a pair of twos. I don't love them. I don't hate them. I just want to ignore them. I still feel that way today. Basic materials I have not liked all year, and I don't like them today, and I'm not going to like them the rest of the year. So, and I think as Forrest Gump said, and I have nothing more to say about that. Healthcare, <clears throat> which along with biotech has been my, uh, they've been my two biggest holdings all year. I recently uh, sold. A significant amount of my healthcare position. I still own it, but in smaller size, which I have some dry powder to work with. But I still like healthcare. I don't think it's peaking yet. I think it's got another leg higher uh, later this year. Same with biotech. I sold a good chunk of what I had just out of luck. I sold it up here. Um, I don't remember if Tiny Tiny must have given out in our newsletter. I, this was a key day right here because it was an old Fibonacci extension that we sold into. So I was pretty happy about the selling. Just got lucky, top tick. But I think uh, biotech has higher to go after this pullback's over. So tomorrow will probably be you know, back to 360-ish or so, the biotech index, and then we'll find the bottom somewhere and then hopefully head to 400, which is one of my old targets on the biotech index. Defend, oh, let's do uh, energy. Here's XLE, nothing except that it's oversold, nothing terribly exciting about XLE. I do own OIH, I sold half uh, about a week ago. Um, so I have a small, very small position left in OIH for now. We'll see what happens this week. But nothing really exciting there. Uh, and the defensive stocks, utilities, I I painfully, I bought some Friday, which now looks like I'm going to be early for a second time. I had originally bought some a couple weeks ago right here, and then I bought more on Friday, and we'll see what happens tomorrow, but they've been bludgeoned and obliterated. That's a 20% decline almost in a non-volatile sector. So that's a big, really big decline. They look like they can bounce, but not great long term. Staple stocks I still don't like. 
if the if the bull market were ending, the stable stocks would be stronger. They'd be signaling some kind of recession, and they're they're not strong. Same thing with commercial REITs. Nothing great there either. Looks like utilities a little bit. Oops. Gold and silver stocks. Um, I've got. I think I have a position. I'm at um, my aggressive strategy. I own these, but in my real one, I've got no position in gold and silver stocks. And I think gold continues to go lower. So you know, not not a lot's changed lately, except for my fat fingers it's gotten worse. Um, I think go, until gold goes sub 1100, it's going to be hard for me to get long term excited. All right, let me just check out and see if we have any questions. Uh, David, metal, yeah, metals are up and bonds are up on kind of the safety trade. Do I think it's sustainable? I really don't. I don't think this grease thing is sustainable on the downside. Uh, what individual stock do I see gapping down tomorrow? I think, Steve, I think it's going to be anything and everything is going down tomorrow morning. You'll see, over, my guess is you'll see probably more than 2,500 stocks down in the first five minutes of trading. Uh, yes, Sam, I agree with you. Right now, on a percentage basis, we're only talking about a 2% decline or so. But the media is going to have a field day with this tomorrow. How this is so awful and it's going to be contagion and... Lehman Brothers and counterparty risk and blah, 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 blah. Mark my words. Here's what would, you know what? Here's what will concern me tomorrow is if when you watch Fox or CNBC or Bloomberg, if all you see are people who are bulls saying you got to buy the decline, you got to buy the decline. That will concern me, FYI. Uh, do I have any illuminating rash? Ooh. Illuminating rationale for the divergence between the trannies, basic materials, and consumers. Uh, that's a lot to put into one analysis because they have nothing. It would be one thing if you're looking at the trannies versus the industrials, but in the basic material stocks, for the most part, trade more with emerging markets than anything else. So a weaker dollar helps them. Consumer stocks, the staple stocks or XLP, um, they're not, they're just mediocre because the U.S. economy is not in bad shape, relatively speaking. The consumer discretionary stocks are doing well because the consumer is fine. But I'm not sure I could give you any kind of illuminating rationale for putting all of them together. I, I, need, I would need a lot of time to think about that, Mike. Um, and then Adidas, the overall step aside, short term. Yeah, you know, I don't think we're, we've really had a decline yet to even talk about a bottom. Oops. Oh, my God. So here's the ES live. I mean, you, could you buy them tomorrow? Yeah, you could buy them and bounce, but I, I want to see how tomorrow. I'm not in a hurry to go commit my dry powder to this. Sit back and wait. Let's see. Richard, uh, if a person has a number of closed stop loss on stocks, should they be suspended? Well, I think you have a, ask a great question that I can't answer. But for sure, if you've got a lot of closed stops, you're going to get hit tomorrow at the opening. The question you have to ask is, do you want to get stopped out when you when your risk plan said you should, or did something change? And that, that's not, not to cop out, but I, I don't know what your risk tolerance is. That's a hard question for me to answer. Um, yes, Sam, I'm supposed to be on uh, Fox Business Wednesday night for an hour, but um, I canceled last week, and I'm probably going to cancel this week. I've had some hearing issues following a flight, 
my, when I flew last month and I came back, hearing was all screwed up, and it's come and gone. So my doctor said it's absolutely nothing to worry about. It'll go. It'll it'll return to normal. But um, I've been concerned because I don't want to be on a show and then get asked a question and go, "What? Excuse me? Pardon me? I couldn't hear you." So I think I may cancel for this week and see how my hearing is. <laughs> Scott, my hand to rush limbo's oxycodone. No, I, I haven't taken. <laughs> I haven't taken any meds, and I probably should have. I, I flew home from California. I landed. My ears were all clogged up, and they never really unclogged, especially my right ear. It's, it's like really annoying and bothersome. So I just don't want to. You know, I'm so I'm so cognizant. Um, it only takes one joke of an appearance on TV to make you a laugh. I'm already a laughing stock sometimes, so I don't need to add fuel to the fire by saying, what? Couldn't hear you, huh? Huh? So we'll see what happens. I'm sure I'll be fine. All right, let's forge ahead. Uh, so bonds will go to TLT. You know, they're going to probably be 118 to 120 tomorrow morning. Um, People say, is this double bottom? I don't know. The bond chart does not look great to me. So I would not want to buy bonds at 120. I'd rather sit back and wait and see how this shakes out. The dollar, to me, the dollar is really interesting here because it, just on this chart, to me, it looks like the dollar should head a couple more percent higher. But I think last I saw, dollar was down uh, against a couple of currencies, and it looks like the yen is the big beneficiary so far. So I do still like the dollar long term. I think dollar is going to go much higher. I think we're going to go way above here. Um, Euro is going to get whack pretty good. And we'll see if this means the end of this rally. And because once this rally ends, the euro is probably going below par down here. And the yen, I think, is strong. This is another rally which I would use to get short the yen for the long term. Not a short term trade, but a long term trade. One that could last quarters and quarters, not more than a year. Uh, let's see. We did gold. Crude oil, if Tiny ever wanted to give an example of something that's coiled up and ready for a move, there you go. There is a monster move. Oh my god, the ADX is now under 15. Wow. So crude oil is certainly wound up and ready for a large move pretty soon. Uh, Natty Gas, the bottom that will never be complete because every time we talk about it, the bottom goes on. This certainly looks like bottoming action in Natty Gas. Are we heading up from here? I don't know. Smart money has been long for a long, long time and unrewarded. We'll see what happens. Okay, uh, let's see. Copper. Another one that I, it's just hard to get excited about. A pair of twos to me. I don't love it. I don't hate it. Uh, let's see. Copper, natty gas, oil, gold we did. Did the currency. Let's go back and do the grains, which the grains, smart money has been long forever in the grains. And we talked about, last time we were on, we talked about all these divergences. And wheat finally 
responded in an enormous way this week. Um, wheat's a buy into any kind of weakness. I think you're probably going to see this recent peak tested up here in wheat. Corn's another one we talked about. Same thing. I mean, you're seeing this is when a commodity rally starts, they melt them right up, and they don't give you a chance. Hard to, it's hard to argue with the action in corn. Smart money's been locked and loaded long and finally being rewarded. And finally, beans, which has been the weakest of all, the action is good, but not as good as wheat and, and corn. Sugar still looks crummy. Nothing. I don't know. No interest in sugar. Cotton. Um, I like, so Friday's action is, so I like the tails trying to hold old support and the moving averages. And then this action is really good in cotton. So another one that's really trying to push out higher. Cocoa is a different story because Dirty rallied. Beautiful, beautiful little flag here. That's now resolving itself higher. Coffee's been frustrating. And it's still like natural gas trying to bottom out. Um, eventually it will get there and we'll get a rally going, but not yet. Oops, let me see if we have any questions. What's my best trade idea now, John? Hmm. John, that's a really good question. I don't think I have an answer. I gotta think about that. I can't give you an answer right now because I want to wait and see how the next day or two or three days shake out. But I like how you, that was a tough question. Yeah, Lee, I, I've been negative on the yen for a couple of years. So to me, I said this for years. Anytime the yen bounces, you just get short. Hold on. Brian, you said you like the home builders. I do. Housing starts are up but not great. That's true. Why do I like them with the economy is not great? Well, first of all, I think the economy is a lot better than the numbers show, number one. Two, the input costs for the home builders, land and lumber, have come down. That's a positive. Uh, the mortgage rates going up is a negative, but also with the home builders, you've got plenty of mergers and acquisition activity just starting. So I like the, the kind of the fundamentals of the home builders for now. Mike, how big is the Greek exit? Um, how am I going to time a long entry? I can't tell you today because that would presuppose I know how the market's going to trade. Um, I'm going to look for sufficient pessimism to build up, and then that will tell me we're in the last couple of innings of the decline, and then I'll buy. But I don't know how it's going to shake out, and I'm not going to stick my neck out until I feel at least um, that we have a 50-50 or better chance. Right now, with the market closed, I think the, down, the downside is over 1,000 points and the upside is 500. So I'm going to wait until that risk-reward ratio is a little more in my favor. Um, Bill. Won't the won't corn and beans gap down with the dollar gap up? Probably, yes. Uh, Scott, one year burning plant. <laughs> uh, sorry, yeah, I'm late. Where do you, where do you? The index is in July are going down, May. We're going to have an ugly opening if you're long and a really happy opening if you're short tomorrow. But I, I don't, I guess, I, mean, I just wouldn't jump on and buy this yet. Uh, 
So I think I want to wait and watch how it shakes out. Um, it's like any other kind of external shock. You know, you, you wait and see how things shake out before you take action. Uh, Ralph, we, we stopped covering stocks on um, on this on the strategy session. Tiny covers them on our winning edge trader inner circle session at 7:20 on Sunday nights. There's Apple, but, but he covers those. That, that, that's his area area of ex expertise and responsibility, not mine. So he covers them before this. Um, Heard is going to. Yeah, we could maybe we could give back this, the small gains that we've gotten this year in the next couple of days to a week. Sure. Is there anything that that told you technically the ES would go down? No, well, the ES going down is strictly a a Greek story. So before today, is there anything technically? I mean, all you can say is that we began it. We we made our all-time high. We pulled back. We had a feeble bounce, and we began to roll over. That's this is always a crummy pattern, uh, but it doesn't mean it always works. So, but there's nothing that was that said we're gonna have a huge decline, and I don't think we're having a huge decline. I think this is a just a routine pullback. I mean, way back in October, this was what eight percent here, and people thought it was the end of the world. This is when uh, Ebola was out. What the heck is going on outside? Either a wicked thunderstorm or early fireworks. I can't tell the difference. Okay, other lots of questions tonight. A lot of good ones. Last call, questions, comments, concerns, quibbles. Ask away. What the heck? Any more questions, comments? What is UNK? Is it a stock? No stock. Oh, junk. Sure. Oh, yeah. You got it. Yep. Thank you. UNK, unk. You meant JNK. Okay, hold on a second. I already have that done. <clears throat> so. Oops, I'm going to move this thing over that you guys can't see. One sec. All right, here's the AD line. We knew here was a small warning because the Dow made a high right here, and the AD line didn't. So tomorrow, the AD line will probably be down here-ish. It's going to fall pretty hard tomorrow morning. Um, anything to do yet? No. Junk. Junk bonds. So here is the PIMCO High Yield Fund. Um, there's nothing here. Junk bond has not done well lately. As you can see in JNK. I don't have a position in any of it, so I think it pr JNK looks like it wants to head lower. So uh, maybe we're looking at you know, two or three percent. Um, what I want to look at with JNK is I want to see when it trades to a discount to the underlying before I start getting excited again. So for me, that probably means a decline below 38. And what is going on? I've never been in a war zone, but it sounds like people are shelling the outside of my house. And consider I, considering I live on a small street with 
not a lot of houses and no one around me. It's a little unnerving. Um, so there's JNK. Um, on my website, investortomorrow.com, in the media section, here's an interview I did on Friday with CNBC India regarding Greece. Um, they, they tried to translate it into, so it, it doesn't sound, I sound, you know, kind of dumber than I sound normally, but you'll get the gist of my idea if you want to look, look at it. It's on investortomorrow.com slash IN media. Let's see. Which country could default next? Gavin. The, and Gavin, that's exactly the question that I hope everybody asks. Because I think once you start getting into that negative thinking, we'll get a bottom in the stock market. Uh, people will start talking about you know, Portugal, maybe, or heaven forbid, Spain or Italy. And there goes the contagion, and the whole thing begins to unravel. That's what I'd like to hear talk about. I hope we don't hear everyone saying that. The Greece thing is no big deal and everyone should buy right now. Then I will get concerned. Uh, would you sell the euro at this point? Probably. But that's only because I'd rather wipe the slate clean and come back fighting tomorrow. I've read that the RMB could take over the dollar. Lee, what do you think? Lee, not to, not, and no disrespect intended, because um, I've had this comment from this group over the last couple of years. I think... The chance of that happening anytime soon is about the same as me being six feet tall. And I'm 5'8 and I'm 49 years old. So I don't think there's any chance that the Chinese currency takes over the, the, reserve, the world reserve status. And it's simply because when push comes to shove, where is the world going to put their money? Where do they trust and have the most confidence? It ain't in China, that's for sure. It ain't the Europeans. It certainly ain't the Japanese. It's us. So I don't think there's a shot that China becomes the world's reserve currency anytime soon. And and Paul is five six at five eight. At best. Five eight, baby, and damn proud of it. So now as we're talking, I see a little story that says um, the Syrians are now going to use their chemical weapons, which they said they never had to begin with, um, against the Islamic Republic, Islamic fighters. So, and now the U.S., which said to Assad, or I'm sorry, Obama said to Assad all those times, don't you dare use chemical weapons against your people because we're going to come out and fighting. And then he did it, and then Obama said, you better not do that again. And then nothing ever happened. So now I think Assad, he's no, there's no way he's going to let ISIS take over his country without a fight, in my opinion. I thought all of the chemicals, yeah, Fred, I thought all the chemical weapons were destroyed. But even before they were destroyed, Fred, they didn't have them. So once they had them, they destroyed them. But they actually never destroyed them because they didn't have them, but they actually have them now. So ridiculous. Um, have you heard of a new currency, which is a basket? May, I've heard that so many times that it was actually a petrodollar um, global currency basket. I, I don't see it. I mean, the greenback rules. It's the greenback. I mean, look at this chart. Okay, This is a monthly chart of the dollar. Twenty-five years of the dollar. All right. Why do I think it ain't going anywhere? On a percentage basis, the dollar is really stable. Same level was that in the late '80s, early '90s. It just oscillates around, and that's what you want as a world reserve currency. You don't want to inflate it away. You don't want to deflate it to oblivion on the upside. It's been the perfect, it's, it's done exactly what it's supposed to do.
Uh, let's see. China doesn't have sufficient bond market or enough gold to be. No, it's a, China doesn't have anything, Jack. I mean, they're they're decades or maybe a century behind. Um, although I'm not, I don't agree with you on gold. I think at some point in the next five or ten years, we're going to find out that China has the biggest gold reserves on earth. So. May it's not about believing this or not. Everybody has their own opinion. I mean, there are some quacks out there who write newsletters talk about you know the collapsing dollar. They're a bunch of morons. I, honestly, I get this stuff all the all the time from clients. Say, did you read this special report from blah blah blah? And I and I said blah 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 is seriously clinically a moron. Um, the dollar has never been lower than it was in March of 08. How do I know? Because they actually got lucky and turned bullish the dollar in 08. So people talk about you know, Ron Paul's another idiot. Ron Paul, Frank, Ron Paul's an idiot. Um, that's another one. I mean, give me a break. Calling the next crisis. Oh, this is a thunderstorm. That's what this is. Oh boy, lights are flickering. Wonderful. Um, so all these guys talking about the, the dollar never has been lower than it was right here in 08. So this whole rally, I've heard people like Peter Schiff say, the collapsing dollar. Really? Dollar's had a monster rally here. Sorry. Uh, yeah. uh, did I have a chart of the RMB? I did. I do. i got to remember how to pull it up. So Lee, next time I promise you I'll grab it. Do you think the U.S. dollar will stay in the same range since the 80s? I think ultimately the dollar is heading above these highs, probably towards you know 105, 110. Eventually, the really strong dollar is going to cause a crisis, but I don't think it's down here. It's, it's up here when you have an absolute flood of capital out of Europe, out of Asia, into the dollar, into the U.S. And that's what I think ultimately ends our bull market. Um, I just don't, I don't think it's now. Could I be wrong? Absolutely. I'm wrong. As my, as Tiny will tell you, I'm wrong all the time. Um, Let's see. Give me one second. I'm just looking at something on my phone uh, for the RMB. Why can't I find it? Let's see, is it RMB? Uh, there you go. It is RMB. Or maybe not. Is it no longer? Let's see. Okay, let's try CYB. Let's get a bad tick in there. Let's try CNY. There you go. Market vectors RMB. FXCH. Now, why do they look different? Oh, boy. You know what? I got to do some work on this because they look too different to be all the RMB. Sorry. I don't want you guys to go on the wrong info. Yeah, I see it's CNY2 May, uh, May, but I also see CYB and FXCH, and I can't understand why they're not equal. Okay. Um, let's see. 
Will gold bond by the time the dollar peaks, Rick? Probably, but not definitely. Gold usually is inversely correlated to the dollar, runs in the opposite direction, but not always. Sometimes they run together, but it's possible. What a crummy answer that is. Probably not a big question, but do you think we'll ever... Jason, yeah, I mean, the likelihood is at some point we'll lose our reserve currency status, but I think it's a long time away. I don't know how old you are. I'm 49. I can't believe it's in our lifetime. Yeah, Jack, I respectfully, vehemently disagree. Um, I don't think they're selling the emerging market co uh, economies are selling all their dollars. That, that's what gives them buying power around the world. So I don't agree. I think the dollar, the rally of the dollar is not even accepted yet as a real rally. And the end of the rally is when the, the currency usually go vertical. So I think it probably goes higher than I think. Because I think the yen can go down 50% from here. And that would really propel the dollar, forgetting about you know, how bad they could smoke the euro. I mean, if, if it gets really bad in Europe in, over the next in a couple of years, they could devalue the euro you know, down to, it was already at 80 once, so it could, it could certainly go below 80. But just one man's opinion, I, I definitely respect you have other opinions. Other questions, comments, concerns? Well, that, uh, the money that drives the next U.S. market, how much is foreign money? Whew. Mike, tough, another tough question. You're going to kill me tonight, Mike. Um, I think the next big rally in equities uh, I think you will see a lot of foreign money coming into our system. And it's got to be from Europe. How much? I have no idea. But I, do, I, I feel strong about one thing. The bull market's not over yet. There are pieces in place that we normally see when a bull market ends, but I don't think that enough pieces are in place for the bull market to end. That's my opinion. So that is all. Thank you all for coming. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, have a good sh holiday shortened trading week. Um, check back. If, you, if I end up on, uh, on Fox Business, I will post it on my blog. So invest for tomorrow blog. Other than that, have a great week. And maybe Tiny will send it out to our email list if you're on our email list. Tiny, I'm done. Hey guys, I'll be right back. Huh? I'm coming back on. Okay. Thanks, Paul. No, thank you, Mike. <laughs> Grease is the word, guys, at least for tomorrow. Anybody interested in joining the inner circle? If you got questions, ask them here. Otherwise, email me. You got winningedgetrader.com slash special dash offer if you'd like to sign up. Watch my video. Otherwise, I will be here next week for sure. I don't know if Paul will be here, but I will definitely be here. And I am 5'10". Mike, plug this in near, near mommy's desk. Close the door.
Kids start camp tomorrow morning. I'm very happy. The week and a half I've been with them or whatever. From the, at the newsletter, May. Yeah, I, I don't. We don't know how to figure that out. But no, it's beating it because obviously the market is down. That is going to be down now for this month. Uh, using the one percent rule, I think we're up a couple of percentage points. Not a ton. We we had about ten trades. So let's see. We had the spy was a small winner. Baxter was a nice winner. GameStop was an okay winner. Bank of America was an okay winner. AST was a loser. And then we had about, I guess we had a couple of stocks that broke even. I don't know how many. I, I, I mean, I have all everything we did, but I really don't care about the ones that, that broke even. I just know the winners and losers. Mike from Arizona wrote that he made his entire year uh, the paid for the entire year just on the Baxter trade. That was his. Uh, it was in. It was a uh, a testimonial, an unsolicited testimonial he sent in. So, everything is managed. End of day. It's not day trading, but it is active trading. You know, people ask me what the holding time is, and my answer is I want to hold them forever. But forever doesn't usually come because we usually grabbing in and out of the swing, and we're very aggressive with trailing stops. We have the street smarts approach, the street smarts book approach, which is, you know, lock in profits as soon as possible, and, you know, with a trailing stop and let the market take you out. I mean, look, we're flat heading into tomorrow. You know, I, I, I like to say that I knew this was going to happen. I didn't. I'm not going to pretend I did. You know, it's like Paul, someone asked Paul, what, what could have told you this was going to happen? Yeah, I don't see anything that could have told me this was going to happen. But for those of you in the inner circle, you know that on the video, I one of my scenarios is that we do go down to test the lower end of the range and that, that we were headed there. But to know this was going to happen, no, nah, come on. You know, Anybody who tells you they knew this, you know, there's the one moron you know, I'm sorry for using that tone. I usually don't like talking about competitors like that. But, you know, he's saying how his two ace traders were short on Friday. All right. Very good. Good, good for them. And you know, good for you. I didn't see this, you know, this exact move coming. So. But, I mean, we have a chance now being, you know, down on the month. Unless something dramatic happens the next two days. So anyway, but look, you could try it for a month. It's only $87. You can cancel any time. You're never locked into any anything. Okay? That's it. I got to go. Any questions, tiny at winningedgetrader.com. You want to watch the video, it's winningedgetrader.com slash special offer. I will talk to everybody next week. Have a great trading week.